So today we are going to do section 23.2, which is properties of logarithms and the change of the base formula. Um, before we start this lesson, a couple things that we need to go over are special case logs. So if you have a log with the base that has the same value as this guy right here, this, your logarithm will always equal 1. If you have a log base of a number and you got of 1, it will always equal 0. Okay, So in this example right here, I have log. Remember, this is really just a base 10. If there's not a number down there, there's just a known 10 to be there. Remember, that's the common log. So this is log base 10 of 10. Because these numbers are both the same, this logarithm would equal 1. Over here, we have something called a natural log. That means that your log has a base of e, as you can see right here. And we are going to replace that with ln. ln is going to stand for your natural log. Okay. So in this example right here, this ln of e, this is really, if you want to rewrite it to have log of base e, it would be log base e of e. And again, we're using the special case over here that both of these are the same, so this would actually just equal 1 as well. Okay. Um, next, we're going to uh, apply the properties of logarithms in any base. Uh, this learning target will actually be carried on throughout the whole front side of this worksheet here. Um, and this will sound a little bit of a review. The only difference on these problems compared to what you guys did in the last section is that we have different bases down here. In the last section, you guys always um, just used base 10. There wasn't a number there. So that's the only difference here. Um, so it says express each logarithm statement as an exponential statement. So if I look at this, it says log base 4 of 16 equals 2. Now, earlier you guys learned something called the swoop method. And we're going to carry that into this lesson as well. So remember, you circle your first number and you're just going to swoop it around. So this would be 4 to the second power equals 16. Now let's logically think about that. Is 4 squared 16? Yes, it is. So that's all you got to do there. Okay. Over here, let's use the swoop method again. So we have our first number. And we're going to swoop it to the other side. So we get 5 to the third power equals 125. And again, think about it. Does this logically make sense? 5 to the third power is 125. Now I'm going to show you guys one other method um, besides the swoop method. I call this bay. Now I know you guys have all heard of this term before. Okay, Some of you guys call your... Uh, girlfriends, boyfriends, that. Um, before we use this method, I'm going to rewrite this um, natural log to have a log base e, because remember, ln is the same thing as log base e. So we've got log base e of 1 equals 0. So all I did was rewrite the ln to have log base e. Now bay comes into play. Here, all you're going to write out is b a e. Okay? B is the base, A is your answer, and E is your exponent. All right, and then just use these letters, the bay, to rewrite um, the exponential form. So the base of your exponential form will be the B value. So you have uh, e, that's your b value. And then in exponential form, the exponent would be e. So your e value is 0 equals, and then your answer, that's the a value, which was 1. Remember, anything to the 0 power always equals 1. Okay. So if you guys ever get confused with the swoop method, if you want to maybe try out um, the Bay method that might help you. All you have to do is in logarithmic form, spell Bay, label your B, A, and your E, and just rewrite them as you would 
an exponential form. You have your base, your exponent, and equal to your answer. Okay? Um, so down in example four through six, it says express each exponential statement as a logarithm statement. I'm going to go back to using the swoop method right here, since I know that's how you guys first learned it. So I'm going to take this first number, I'm going to swoop it around, and remember you always have to write log first, so log base 3 of 81 equals 4. And that's it. Let's use the swoop method again on example 5. Circle the first number and swoop around. So log base 6 of 1 over 36 equals negative 2. And then on example 6, I'm actually going to use the Bay method here, um, just in case if you want to use that. Now up here, notice I spelled Bay when I was in logarithmic form. You can't spell Bay right here. Right here, all you have to do is just label your Bay so from the exponential form. So the E would be the base, the 0 is your exponent, and 1 is your answer. That logically makes sense, right? So then now... We just have to write that in logarithmic form, spelling bay. So I'm going to write log, and then I'm just going to write bay under there so I can just plug in my numbers. So my b value is e, my a value is 1, and my exponent is 0. Okay? Maybe I'll draw that little arrow to each of those to kind of help you guys out. All right. So again, it does not matter which method you use, okay? It gets you to the same spot no matter what. All right, um, let's see here. Seven through 10, evaluate without using a calculator. Some of you guys rely a lot on your calculator, but you guys are a lot smarter than you think sometimes. So all we are gonna do here, like uh, what was in the last video, set these equal to x and either use the swoop or the bay method to solve for x. So I'm going to use the swoop. So we have 2 to the x power equals 32. Now let's just think about this. What, how many times do I need to take the number 2 and multiply it by itself to get 32? 5. 2 to the, two to the fifth power is 32. Okay, and that again was the swoop method. All right, number eight. Again, set this equal to x. And we're going to swoop around. So I have 4 to the x power equals 1 over 64. Now, when you go to solve for x here, anytime you have a fraction, you have 1 over something, um, that exponent is going to be negative. Okay? So now you just have to ask yourself, okay, 4 to what power is going to give me 64? How many times do you need to multiply 4 by itself to get 64? And that's going to be 3 times. All right. Um, number 9, again, set that equal to x. Now I'm going to do the Bay method here. if you would prefer to do that. Now if you use the swoop method on this, you would get the same answer. So I have my base, my exponent, equal to my answer. So 3 to what power gives me 27? That would be 3. 3 to the third equals 27. Um, number 10, set that equal to x. I'm going to use the Bay method again here. B A. So my base is 12, my exponent is x, and my answer is 1. A number to what power always equals 1? Anything to a certain power always equals 1. You guys should all know this. 0. Anything to the 0 power always equals 1. Okay? Alright, so like I said, this was a, just a bunch of a review of what you guys did earlier. Um, the only thing that's different here is the base of the logs. Okay, we used to have a 10 there, now we don't. 
All right, down below, um, we're still going to be looking um, at our properties of logarithms, and then we're going to talk about how to use those properties and either um, rewrite a single logar logarithm or expand it. So here we have, it says rewrite each expression as a single log. On example 11, we have log base 2 of 12 plus log base 2 of 2. Now remember, if we have the same base and we're adding the logs, we're really going to be multiplying these two numbers. So if you're adding, you're really multiplying, okay? So we're going to have log base 2 of 12 times 2 is 24, and that's it, okay? In example 12, um, we have 2 natural log of x minus natural log of 5. Remember, these natural logs are log base e. Now, you don't have to rewrite these to have log base e. You can keep them like that because all we're doing is using the properties here. So don't forget about this, the power property where that can become an exponent. So ln natural log of x to the second minus the natural log of 5. And any time that we are subtracting, what do we do with these two values? We divide. So I have the natural log of x squared divided by 5. All right. And then example 13, 4 times log of x. Um, all we can use here is the power property. So log of x to the fourth power. Guys, do not forget the base right here is a 10. There's a known 10 to be there. This is a common log. All right, let's talk about the expanding. So now we're just going to work backwards here. So we have um, log base 7 of x divided by y to the third. Because we're dividing, we're going to work backwards here. We need to make this a subtraction. So we're going to have log base 7 of x minus log base 7 of y to the third. Okay. Now you guys should notice that we have a power right here. We need to get rid of that power. That is going to move to the front. So I have log base 7 of x minus 3 times log base 7 of y. And that is it. All right, and example 15. This one kind of looks like number example 11 up here, okay? We're working backwards. If we're multiplying two items by each other, we're really just going to be adding them when we expand this. So this will be log base 4 x squared plus log base 4 of y. All right, and again, we have the power property right here. We need to get rid of this guy and move him out in front. So this will be 2 log base 4 of x plus log base 4 of y. All righty. And then the very last thing we are going to discuss is something called the change of base formula. Now, if you guys have the TI-84 plus calculator, like this guy, okay, you can actually do these problems on your calculator. Um, the older models, like the TI-83 plus, and actually some of the 84 models, um, they cannot, they don't have the same functions as the newer calculators, so this is when you have to use this formula. Okay, and this is called the change of base formula. I'm going to show you guys how to do it on the calculator and how to use the formula. Okay, so as these examples say, evaluate using a calculator around to three decimal places. So um, if you have one of the newer versions of the TI-84, all you have to do is go to um, math, scroll up, whoops, and to the A value where it says log base, and I have this written right here, guys. 
So if you have one of these newer calculators, this is what you want to find in the calculator, okay? Hit enter, and then you can just type that in right there. So log 2 of 12, and we get 3.585, because the directions say to round to three decimal places. All right, now, if you do not have this feature in your calculator, don't worry, okay? We just have to use the change of the base formula. So it's so if you have a log base b of x, it's going to be equal to log of x divided by log of b, because your calculator can calculate um, common logs, which is what this is. Remember, these both have base 10, okay? So let's do here, this would be the b value, the 2 would be the b value, and 12 would be your x value, right? So this would be log 12 over log 2. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in. I'm going to do log 12, I'm going to figure out what that is, and then divide it by log of 2, which gives me the same exact answer as above. So those are kind of two different ways to look at that, okay? All right, example number uh, 17, log base 4 of 15. So math, scroll up to log base. I'm going to do 4 of 15. So that's 1.953. Or if we have to use the change of base formula, your B value is 4, and your X value is 15. So I have log 15 divided by log 4, which equals 1.953. Oh, whoops, let's check that, sorry. Got a little ahead of myself. So log 15 divided by log of 4, 1.953. Okay, and one more. Log base 5 of 600. So math, scroll up to log base 5, 600. And we get 3.975. We gotta round that up because we got a 6 after that 4, right? Again, if you need to use the change of base formula, your B value is 5 and your X value is 600. So we have log of 600 divided by log of 5. So log 600 divided by log of 5 which gives us 3.975. And that's it.